Okay, I think we are live. So, um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Azriel, and I'm going to talk about the Amethyst Game Engine engine, as you shall see. So, um, here's uh, the agenda, and um, we'll look at the history of how Amethyst uh, came to be. We'll look at some of the philosophies that drive its design and the features it provides, some personal experience, and we'll show off some of the bits that some of the community have um, posted in the show off um, Discord channel in the Amethyst chat. All right, so some history. Amethyst began with two first commits. I don't know how you do this on purpose, so I was quite amused. But um, <laughs> all right, so uh, yeah, so originally authored in 2016 by El Calderon, um, was based on the BitSquid or Stingray game engine. Um, that game engine has been discontinued um, late last year. So the original post is at this URL, but um, if we just go to the main page, it's like that. This nice quip. If you listen to a Unix shell, can you hear it seek? <laughs> pretty, pretty clever. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So um, right now, uh, Amethyst is a 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization. That means it's registered as a legal entity um, somewhere in the United States, and it's got 24 members. Last I checked, it's also accepting donations if you do want to donate. Yeah. So just check out the README on the repository. Um, there's Open Collective and Donor Box. I think Donor Box is preferred. All right. So, the philosophy of what drives Amethyst. So, um, the Amethyst is built out of um, a number of highly composable modular components. So, kind of adhering to the Unix philosophy. Like, so if you have like cat, sed, and whatever else uh, commands, those are commands which they do one thing, do one thing only, and they um, can be linked up with your various um, connectors. It's built on top of the specs entity component system library, and this means you do not partition your, uh, uh, your data by object state, such as like player, player class, monster class, that kind of thing, but you partition it by behavior. So you're going to store the same type of data together. We'll see a pictorial form of that later. And the reason for that is it enables multi-threading. So, um, well, it's, it drives a code to a, a design which it's easy to um, process your data in parallel. So um, we'll dive into each bit a bit more. So Unix philosophy, do one thing do one, and do it well. So this is on the Wikipedia page. There's like two more things after that. Um, so, quote. So, um, WebGenera is a, a user of Amethyst, um, and he's probably a game developer. So he's used Unity and Godot, and those are two big game engines. And he said that Unity and Godot are relatively good at what they do, but they tend to bend the game designer in a specific direction. So you have to fit uh, Unity or Godot's mold. Whereas for Amethyst, it doesn't force you to into a, a specific design, and that means you have to kind of architect your game the way you want it to be. And if you do it badly, you would have to do some massive refactoring. So what that means, what kind of means, is over here you see um, in the traditional game engine, you'd see uh, that the big purple blob up there is kind of like what the game engine would provide you, and it's got all of the low-level things sussed out. You, you just need to provide your, maybe your menus, your game objects, some interaction logic perhaps, um, and then plug those in. So um, you'll just be coding the bottom bits. Amethyst is more like this. So it provides you uh, a number of separate crates. Each crate provides you bundles. Um, it's a bit lower level, but um, so these bundles will um, wrap around existing libraries such as Rodeo for audio, um, graphics for graphics, um, specs for ECS, and widget for input. 
And um, what you do is you plug your custom logic into those bundles, but you still need to wire them up at the end. So uh, you're going to write the top and the bottom bit. So amethyst is kind of like they wrap around each of these um, middle crates. You can also create your own um, bundles, and that's what you have to do to make a proper game, because amethyst is quite low level. It only gives you, say, um, rendering. It gives you um, audio, like play or sound. But it doesn't, it doesn't help you link up, say, this object, um, when you do a key press, it has to play the sound and display the sprite. You have to do that yourself. OK. And um, if you did the wiring badly, you'd have to do this massive refactoring, which I experienced. So if you look at this, this is actual real stats. Um, it involves lots of regex, lots of strict, strict um, conventions, say. And so because I'm just building a game as a solo developer, and I'm not a game developer, um, I figured out how to do this. And it's not fun, but it's kind of fun at the end. All right. And for the ECS part of um, Amethyst, so ECS is Entity Component uh, Systems. Uh, that's a way of structuring your data and logic. Um, so, can you guys see this? Yeah, okay, cool. So, um, this is how you might structure your data for an object oriented design. So, say you have a game where you've got a player, a monster, and an energy blast. Um, and each of them has position and velocity fields. But, um, the player has a name field, which is a strength. Monster has a strength field, which is a strength. Now, um, in a object oriented design, you might have a collection of players. You might have a collection of, say, glass, and you might have a collection of monster. And each of those things perhaps stored um, in its own um, lo location. And the way you do it in ECS is instead of storing these whole states of objects as your own object type, you would store the fields of different objects, but of the same field type, in a collection. So if you look over here, you are going to see that we're going to store things across. So um, the first collection is a collection of positions, second one is a collection of velocities, third one is a um, hash map of like, the strings, and finally of your strength from one source. So why would we do this? So um, if you are trying to implement a position update system based on velocity, you don't need to access all of the other fields at the bottom. So let's say if you have many fields um, apart from position and velocity, let's say you have 10 other fields below it. Um, by fetching only the data um, that we need to compute the position update, we're going to save a lot of um, data transfer, and that's where you get a lot of cache benefit because you are going to get a lot more cache hits by fetching only the data that you will be accessing. And so in this um, scenario, um, if we take away the types on the top, you can see that we just need to um, look at the field type without caring about what the object type is. OK, so any questions about this so far? Yeah. So I think it has a good question, but I'll repeat it. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot, but I think it's a good question. Um, so you were saying, so your question was around memory. Yeah. So for this to work, I'll say what I think it is, and then you can correct me. I think for each of your processing units, if like you're um, working through the locations, you copy these into a working set that you hand to the, the new location calculator. And they can crunch through all of this using those that data set without having to, like, you, like I was saying, without having to be uh, touching any of the other fields. We can do that in parallel. So, so I guess my, my 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 thought about this was it's I'm trying to figure out whether you're doing this 
from a semantic point of view or from a memory layer point of view. And um, if you're doing it from a memory layer point of view, um, that seems like the wrong motivation that you can address with another, uh, with another uh, process by using a memory story, which is yeah, so um, actually we do it for both. So the memory sizzling, yes, that, that does happen with... Uh, there are some clever compilers which, if you do star your um, fields in the form of x, y, z, and you're going to um, combine like x plus x, y plus y, z plus z, um, there are some clever compilers which can optimize for that. But for the semantic point of view, um, let's say we've got um, a new type which has both position and velocity, we do not need to, say, implement um, movable for this new type and then make sure that new type, um, the implement movable is stored alongside all the other movable objects. So if we attach position and velocity comp components, um, the um, ECS system will be able to say, oh, well, just, I don't care what type it is, as long as it's got these two components, um, we'll operate over that. Yeah. There, there's another talk um, in the last meetup, it's also recorded, that goes into more detail. Cool. Um, you explained really well in that talk about the cache that's that you did, um, by the memory up, um, for what you do with the CSS. Oh, I haven't had a look, so I was wondering the semantic, like, does it change the semantic meaning of it? Is that the motivation for the performance? Because they can be separated. Yeah, so um, a little point on that was with the behavior invariant maintained, like anything with position and velocity are updated, you lose the state invariant, which is you're not sure if, so if you create a player and forget to attach um, position or velocity, that's invalid state for a player. But object-oriented um, style of programming will not allow you to do that So, because the compiler will tell you no, you need to have everything, whereas um, this will allow you to not forget to do the behavior for each of the types. Cool. Okay, so um, that was the breather. Okay, so we're going to go into features. It's really fast. All right, so Features, um, we're going to go through each of them at a really high level. Um, we can talk about um, more detail if you so wish later on. So for rendering, we currently use um, the graphics scrape to render um, using OpenGL as a backend. This is in the works to be replaced by uh, Rendy, which is backed by Graphics Hell, which is a layer on top of these different um, backends. So Vulkan is like the next OpenGL thing. Um, DirectX, uh, that's Microsoft's low-level graphics APIs. Metal is Apple's low-level APIs. Microsoft, I think, supports Vulkan. Metal does, uh, sorry, well, Apple does not. And <laughs> Graphics Hell does not support OpenGL at this point in time. So when we do switch, we'll lose OpenGL support, actually until they do, um, re, uh, do the work to get support up for that one. So what Amethyst can do... Oh, yes. Does Android support Vulkan? Does Android, Android support Vulkan? Ah, good question. I forget. I looked it up before. So you lose Android support? Yeah, but we don't have it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, Amethyst can render in 2D and I think it's still kind of like 3D. With a 3D camera, you need to be careful with the Z coordinates and direction. Otherwise, it's pretty hard to debug. Whereas um, it can do 3D as well. So um, this is one of the examples. Actually, both of these are examples from the Amethyst repository. For asset loading, um, if you uh, some terminology here because I was not a game dev. I don't think I am yet. Um, asset is configuration or data loaded at runtime. Yeah, so like audio files, textures, aka images, and maybe um, character scripts, like behaviors for your object in the game. 
So what is asset learning? Is it like a probably Paris, right? Uh, it's more than that. So what kind of this provides is uh, it provides asynchronous asset loading, which means when you load, when you tell them this, load this asset, it's going to return you a handle to the asset, which will be loaded. And later on, you can query the asset store for that particular type with the handle and say, hey, I've got this handle. Can you give me the asset for it? If the asset was loaded in the meantime, it will give you the data. If it was not loaded, it will give you none. And you can tell it, um, here's a progress tracker. And it will uh, and just uh, I'll query the progress tracker to wait till asset is, assets are all lo loaded before querying the asset store, if I really need the asset to be loaded before I progress to the next state. Yeah, sorry, no pictures. <laughs> and it can also uh, app, uh, provide you hot reload support if you use um, the asset loader correctly, which took me a while. OK, so hot reload is going to be demoed. So uh, this guy. So that's slower than I thought. All right. So on the right here, you can see that uh, there's two characters on screen. They're like breathing. Um, and on the left, you see some character sprites, which um, are used by the game. So let's say I'm an artist, and I decide to improve the sprites. <laughs> All right. When I save that, you can see that immediately the assets have been reloaded and are used by the game. So that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's pretty cool. And and if you come from a say enterprisey software background, like restarting services across lots of machines to pick up con configuration, that's kind of a pain. I, I know this is local, but it's still quite cool to see. Um, that config picked up straight away by your system without having to uh, rejig it. Yeah, so I can undo that and it'll revert. All right, so that's a nice, um, nice feature for say content creators when they are developing a character or other object. There's this warmy crate which is not used in Amethyst, but it. It looks pretty good when I uh, looked at the docs for it. It also um, provides you the ability to say, I've got this asset, and it can be reloaded from file system or from in memory. So perhaps if you've got something computed in memory and your object reads off that computed thing, you can also use Warmi to perhaps um, do your asset hot reload. OK. Any questions about that? Yeah? How, how do you include a hot reload? I don't know. This is what I'm with this. <laughs> right. But uh, theoretically, uh, it's, you have a component um, called a handle to the, to the asset. And it's got a, say, mutex to the resource that, it's, that backs it. And when you, the resource needs to be updated, when it changes, you lock that resource, update it, and then release it, and everyone else can read the new value. Yeah. So does it just check it at the frame, or does ah. it listen to operating system events? Ah, so um, there, you can choose. Um, I think Warmi lets you listen to OS events, whereas Amethyst currently lets you choose by polling or on demand. Like you, you kick it. Yeah. So. I don't think it has a listen to OS events yet, but uh, we can always um, accept contributions. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, how often have you used it inside an actual game? I know development is really important, but mm. during actual gameplay, would that be something that's useful? Doing actual gameplay, so the one, one useful thing would be to say, Loading uh, resources on demand when a character is progressing through a map. Yeah, and if say there's a bug in this map and you want to push it to everybody while you're playing the game, um, it will be useful to say have a stream instead of a file system source. You have a network stream and reload based on that. Yeah. It can be very useful to 
risk of loading yeah. more of the net as well, because you could load a load resolution. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. So, networking. So, Amethyst provides a basic networking um, crate and what we have is we've got the Amethyst network crate and that backs onto something called Laminar. Laminar is a protocol um, built over UDP with some uh, TCP features. So um, we all know UDP is unreli unreliable, but really, really fast. And Laminar lets you choose whether you want unreliable, unordered, and the positive versions of that. So like reliable, ordered, or um, there's one more variant called the sequence, which is give me everything um, in, that you receive in order. If you receive anything older than my current packet, um, like timestamp or something, I don't know what you use. Um, you just discard the older packet. Go cool. yeah. I have not um, gone too deep into that, but there's a really quick demo. Um, if I go to the next one, the top is the server, and it's receive, uh, listening for messages. The bottom's the client, and if I run it and quickly stop it, you can see that. Oh no, it's still running. Uh, okay, yeah, um, they're not very responsive, but we shall ignore that. They'll, they'll stop in time. All right. <laughs> All right, um, so that, that was network. So UI, UI is, um, say, your like, widgets and text, text boxes, check boxes, that kind of thing. We've got some work in progress. This is an actual screenshot I found in the repository. I don't know why they kept it. Um, maybe just no one bothered to update. This is the current state of the UI example. So it's got a very basic. Um, like a uh, square font, oh, it uses a, it can load a system font as well, um, but it's got very bare layout things so top left, middle, and right, and a little text field. I know you can't actually see it as it is all right now, but um, this needs a major rework, and I think that's slowly happening, but um, wait, wait a while, yeah. That there's no, I don't think uh, UI will be in a like usable, uh, well, what one you would expect from a UI library for quite a while, because um, I don't think Rust really has that many mature ones. Maybe Piston is uh, the closest to uh, pure, Rust, uh, pure Rust UI library, but there are many um, like uh, library bindings to other um, existing uh, UI libraries. I have not seen that many um, being tried uh, with Amethyst though. Like IMGUI is the only one I've seen um, run with Amethyst together. Theoretically, you can get Piston to run with Amethyst, but I have not seen that as well. Okay, and Thread prof Profiler. So Thread Profiling is good for profiling your code, so like finding bottlenecks. So if you are a game developer, you tend to have um, maybe 16 milliseconds between frames, like there's a 60 frame per second game, or 33 milliseconds if you're lucky, like 30 frame per second game, which is not that common nowadays, I guess. Um, what you do is, uh, so Amethyst backs into this thread profiler crate, and you simply sprinkle like this line of code everywhere in your code, and every time um, you've got this profile scope, it's going to create a scope for your um, profiling and when you run your application, close it, Amethyst will dump a file called threadprofile.json um, in your working directory. And you can op open that at Chrome, uh, with Chrome. And what that looks like, um, I'll show you the file itself first, which is, um, it's like just a JSON thing. Um, not very interesting, but um, open that with Chrome and you get this. So um, what you see here is um, you got your threads on the left. Um, Amethyst by default spawns a number. I think same number as the number of cores on your computer. Um, each of these uh, blocks on the right are profile scopes. And hopefully you can see that 
uh, down on these areas, there's a lot of tiny small lines, which which um, are also scopes. They're just really, really zoomed in uh, small. So uh, let's go back here. So purple means it's a fixed update. If we zoom in, that's the fixed update. And you can see that there's this small line. If we keep zooming into that one, uh, uh, that's our transform system, which um, it's to do with updating positions of your game entities. Um, you can see that it takes like three microseconds. So you get, um, well, if your systems are good, they should take small amounts of time. If you do see like big areas here, then you know you've got a um, high area of, um, well, uh, place where, uh, where the tension ball bottleneck is. Um, probably see, no, I don't think you can tell CPU or IO from here, but um, you can tell time. And you can, you can drill down from there. So, um, I think we've got a, oh, yes, yeah, test automation. So test automation um, is also to do with quality. So test automation, there is a crate called Amethyst test. And what that allows you to do is, if you are building your Amethyst application, you're um, coding, say, a system which uh, transforms some data. You can say, I want an Amethyst application with some base state. Blank over here just means nothing. I want to add my system to the um, ECS uh, systems. And given some setup, say I create some entities with some components. Um, behind the scenes, between setup and assertion, or between each method call, um, this test framework will run your system. And that way you can tell um, if I have an entity at some position and some velocity, the next call should give me the updated position and um, I can assert that the, uh, my, my system that I just coded works. So in a way, it's hiding a lot of detail for setting up that uh, Amethyst application in the background and you get your nice clean test with just the detail you need. So it should be easier to, uh, well, in this case, writing uh, unit or integration tests for parts of the game. So, for myself, that's um, that's one of my like happy areas because um, I like to make sure code that I write is uh, well correct. And uh, even though the Rust compiler is good at um, comp uh, catching errors at compile time, with Amethyst you tend to get more runtime errors. So um, this is a nice little tool to have. Okay, I think this. Oh, this other and then the reader. All right. So, other um, are features which I will not go into too much detail, but they're useful to uh, know about. So there's audio plays sound. It's not very mature right now, but um, I think someone's going to pick up the work to improve the usage of that. Animation is to do with data transformations over time. Time being clock time, because um, it's it doesn't let you plug in your own logical time, so you can't control time within your game right now. You can only say, I want this animation with certain keyframes, and let's say uh, my character is going to walk and punch. It's going to animate that over time and interpolate. Say, I've got a frame like this, and one like that. It's going to interpolate the movement of the um, character. Um, editor, there's a proof of concept. So. If you are familiar with Unity, um, you've got a nice graphical editor which you can um, see your game objects and tweak them. We've got a proof of concept which I've opened over here. And let's make it big, big, big. So right now it's only read only, so um, we'll wait for that to cycle. But you'll see that there will be a uh, paddle over here which moves up and down. Okay, and watch this value. So it moves based on the panel. So um, it's read only to the value of the component of that paddle. We, we cannot write to it yet. This one's written in Electron with a car um, that just reads from Amethyst at runtime. OK. 
Um, so prefabs are pre-made fabrications. If you work in the, um, say, cloud or DevOps space, a prefab to Amethyst is like a cloud formation template to Amazon Web Services, or Heat to OpenStack, or Terraform to everything else. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's what prefabs are. It's pretty difficult to understand. Um, well, the, the code is difficult to understand. So I wrote some docs recently, which mostly cover simple, the simple cases. The complex cases are hard to document. So, yeah, uh, physics and WebAssembly. There's not much support for that right now. I don't think WebAssembly has got any support because I think we were waiting for Firefox to have uh, multi-threading enabled. Um, do you know? Sixty-eight. Yeah, because um, the shared array buffer thing. Yeah. Where I am, sixty-eight. Not 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 Okay, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think Chrome's enabled that, but um, I think we're still waiting on Firefox for some reason. And also, we don't have much time. <laughs> All right, so breather before we go on. Any questions? Wow, either you all understood everything or no one understood anything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, so my personal experience. So. Um, I am not a game dev, I'm more like an automation dev, but I'm, I'm trying to make a game. And what I found with Amethyst is errors are pretty difficult to troubleshoot. So um, as I mentioned before, Rust, Rust has uh, good error messages at compile time, but Amethyst, the errors you get are usually at runtime. And for the same symptoms, you can have multiple different um, errors. And the error messages that you get, you don't actually have error messages most of the time. So you're going off like feeling where you last touched code. Yeah, so uh, that, that's a pretty difficult thing. There is a nightly feature you can enable which tells you a good enough information for uh, one type of error, which um, hits most new users. but. Um, if you're, yeah, so if you're a new user to Amethyst, enable the nightly feature and use a nightly compiler, you get type ID um, names when you hit a runtime error, and that's very useful. If you are developing and using Amethyst, expect API instability. The only like stable part of Amethyst is it runs on Rust stable. Yeah. So, so, so at least we have that. <laughs> And um, expect to read source, because uh, I think the documentation suffers from the git problem, which, or well, the git problem uh, is, when you ask someone to explain git, they will explain git in terms of git. Like, on the branch you have commits, and commits make up a branch. So it's, which is like circular uh, definitions, and to a person who has not used version control before, it's all very confusing. So the docs just, they sometimes get better, but um, we, we do need to work on that quite a lot. And we're all volunteers, so yeah. And expect to change source. So because Amethyst is quite low level, sometimes when you want to do something, that low level thing doesn't provide you that ability, or it provides you that ability in a very roundabout way. So like I'm a, an, uh, I'm animation, I'm at this animation, if you want to change sprites over um, certain intervals, I guess now it's not too bad, but um, you have to go through these layers of how a 3D game does animation. And that's a lot more complex than how you would do it in a 2D game, say. So, um, if you want to make it easier, you do need to create your own abstractions, usually feed it back to Amethyst, and um, away you go. Okay, so that was my experience. Um, let's look at some of the existing stuff people have done. So, show off. Um, th these are collected from the discard chat, so it's quite hard to go back and find who it belongs to. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. So there's a bubble shear there. I haven't actually seen this um, play. I've, I've only got the screenshot. There's this really nice terrain thing. Uh, um, yeah, like I read a word. Um, so you can see that there's a mini map which shows what each cube or um, which coordinate um, on the map has. And there's, I don't know what this thing is. <laughs> Alright, so there's this side scroller. That's normal for games. <laughs> and there's this um, shooter, uh, Toho style, where you've got your bullet, and there's no collision in this one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey, it's, it's quite hard to get your pattern for the bullet to work, so I, I think the person was quite happy with that. And uh, this one is by Web Shinra, the person who was quoted earlier. It's quite cool. So if you watch the water, it's moving, like the hexagonal house, they're moving. Uh, yeah. cool. I think um, this, this one's the most polished one I've seen um, every time we post. So it's quite, quite nice to see the progress. And because the last talk, we didn't go through the thanks slides, we put it first. All right, so uh, thanks to the Amethyst community to, uh, for our creating um, a lot of good stuff in the game engine engine. And uh, thanks to the Rust community for like, helping when there's lots of obscure errors. Yeah, and Movio for finding this venue. And just links to these slides and various other places. Um, are we game yet is what the Rust, um, are we something yet um, location. And there's a number of other uh, game engines out there. I did not list Piston here, um, but uh, GG, Easy, and Amethyst and Piston were the first three that were available at the time I was choosing a library. I happened to not choose GG, Easy because of the SDL2 requirement. I think that might be going away um, soon, but there we go. Crayon and Tetra, oh, so Crayon, I think existed at the time, I just didn't um, find it. Um, it looks pretty promising as a game engine as well. And Tetra is one of the newer ones. I have not tried it, I haven't seen it, but um, the developer is quite active. And Gate is the game engine that lets you write games for the web, so um, using WebAssembly. And there are at least two um, games that run on that, quite nice as well. So if you're picking something for, um, using WebAssembly, and uh, try Gate. Okay, so any questions? Do you have a feel for um, how many, I guess, big commercial games are made of Rust? Okay, so last I heard, so Chucklefish did try Rust, but they have stopped because they have, uh, they couldn't sustain developing two game engines at the same time, so they've gone back to C, I think. C++. Um, I cannot remember this one. Uh, the develop one of the developers is Redby. Um, they are using, I should know this because they, they do donate quite a bit to Amethyst. Um, they, they are using Rust uh, to develop their game. And I think there's a third one, but I can't remember, but th there were uh, at least three big uh, companies. There's a um, challenge. Uh, I'm trying to something by Dawn. So oh, uh, ready, ready by Dawn? Ready I, by yeah, Dawn. yeah, I think that's the one. So that's a AAA game studio. I don't know, actually. So, yeah, there's definitely a few. Most of the people want to actually be good. Yeah. 
So plans for the physics engine. We are running on N algebra, and we're meant to, I think, tie into N collide. I'm not sure um, if that's right. Great, but um, there's there's a great developed right now called N physics dumb or something. N, N algebra physics dumb. Yeah, they 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 they, they suffix it with dumb because it's uh, pretty much a hack to get. Uh, and physics to work with um, and algebra with amethyst. I don't okay, know. I in terms of. Yeah? I in terms of oh, as in, it's probably not coded optimally. Oh. Yeah, so it, it might it might still uh, work correctly, but um, it might not be efficient. Kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. I think that's us.